Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm just feeding the cows at the minute. So I thought I'd introduce myself. Um, I'm Sam, I'm a beef farmer with my brother Guy, and we're also agricultural contractors. I've gone away from that tractor because it's a bit noisy. Um, so I watch quite a bit of YouTube, Ollie's Farm, uh, Tom Pemberton, Joe Seals, Ollie Blogs, Grassmen, Farm Flex, you know, to name a few. And um, all of those seem to be, they have their own niche, you know. Uh, Ollie, Ollie Bloggs is arable, Tom's dairy, Joe Seals is beef, uh, Farmer Phil does a bit of everything, not so much on the arable side, but he has dairy and beef that have been contracted. Ollie's Farm does a little bit of everything, but you don't see a great deal. Um, and we're sort of the same, you know, we are beef cattle, we have a suckler herd of around 100 cows. Uh, I have about 200 stores at any one time, um, which try and remain all in the shed, although we're quite low at the minute, because uh, we've had problems with TVs, we've been selling quite a few, and we've only just been cleared to start buying a few in. Uh, but we're also contractors, and, and, and we do a bit of straw and hay as well, so we bail quite a bit, and sell quite a bit. Um, and our hay barn is there, the other one behind it's there, this is one of the straw sheds, um, it's been round, there's another straw shed with an empty cattle shed here. Uh, cattle sheds behind me here, here, and here, all on the other side of the farm. Um, we've got planning to put another shed up too. And then we have an outside straw stack uh, there. <laughs> and then every area of concrete you can possibly see usually gets filled up with straw as well. Um, so we do that in the summer, but also Guy will go off with the combines and I quite some, often go off with the combines as well. So we do do a bit of arable contracting too. We don't own the combines, they're owned by someone else. We just help out with grain cart and the such like. Um, and we also do a bit of foraging too with the same group. So I'll do the buck raking. There's my tractor there with the buck rake on. You'll see that a bit later in the video. I've also got the cider patcher on, which I don't usually do, um, but for my own silage here, didn't make sense to bring another tractor in, I could just put it on the back of the mine and do it on myself. Um, so we do grass, rye and maize for them. Uh, it's mainly for a big dairy, 500 cow dairy going up to 800 and they have an AD plant too. Um, and it's quite cool, they featured on Country Carl over the winter, uh, although it was like the least busiest period because it was winter and no one was really there. But anyway, that's what we do and I thought, well, Maybe I could combine everything into one channel. And we have a lot of time sat in tractors um, where you can you sort of you to put videos on Instagram and Snapchat and probably everyone probably gets bored of it on our Instagram and Snapchat. So I thought put it all in one place. I could talk over it, speak a bit about what we do, why we do it, and, and how much we do of it. And, and really the money side of things too, because it's all well and good having nice shiny toys. I mean that tractor behind me, uh, the green one is new he's only a year old yet the blue one 66 plate so uh, he's 66 or 68 one or the other he's blooming old put it that way so um you know kit is a lot of money nowadays how long does it go on for and all of those things so yeah that's what we're gonna do that's what i'm gonna bring to try and bring to the channel and uh you know we'll see what happens so every morning starts the same, feed the cows. Doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, if we're going out foraging at eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock, it means I've got to get out at five and feed the cows. It's not too bad because we only have 120 in the sheds at the minute. Our peak will have about 2.30. Um, so today I'm feeding two and a half, three ton of feed. It's a very simple mix. We do a bit of hay uh, and then we split a 50-50 mix between silage and maize. So I'll put today, for example, I put 300 kilos of hay or haylage in, and then the rest is uh, grass and maize. And, and it's easy, it's all ag bag, so bucket job, off we go. This year we've built a pan, um, try and get better quality silage, and also plastic and diesel is so much money this year. Uh, the ag bag went up about 50p a tonne, uh, and that starts adding quite a lot of money into the things at the end of the day. Uh, it's nice because there was zero waste with the ag bag, we get a little bit of waste with the fab, but we can get more in in a smaller space uh, because our sheds are still filled with hay and straw because uh, we're keeping a lot more cattle this winter than really what we anticipated in the past. 
Um, we're doubling our numbers, so we'll have just shy of 400 cows in all our sheds this winter. So I haven't sold anything on the basis that I don't actually know exactly how much I'm going to need. And if we get to February, March next year, um, and we're looking very comfortable, I might sell some then. Or if we're thinking about expanding again, um, I might keep it in the sheds because it's bought and paid for. Uh, and really we don't need to sell it. So that is you know, where we are at with uh, everything this morning. Um, so on a Sunday morning, all I tend to do is feed here, check around the sucker cows, because we're probably going to be hung over somewhere. And uh, these are 25, so I can't blame them. Uh, I check around the sucker cows over on the other farm, and then I sort of try and have a quiet Sunday afternoon. Uh, but yeah, every day of the week, every morning of the week, is the same, 365 days a year. So I don't really know what this channel, like video wise, how many I'm gonna do a week, uh, whether I'm gonna daily vlog like Joe and Ollie do, um, or do three videos a week like Tom, or just do a video as and when I have time, um, with probably definitely one a week. But this week to start off, what I've done is, I've just done a week of us and put it all together. Um, we're just getting in the John Deere now, actually, to put it in the shed because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So this week we've moved 24 heifers from the sheds here over to the suckler farm and they're ready for the bull. The bull's out with them now, actually. We've turned the bull, uh, one bull out this week too. Uh, we're flying around a few cattle. You won't see that. Um, and we've cut silage and put it in a pit. So you'll see all of that. There's some dodgy videos of the forager. Cause I was on the pit and I've only got one video of me rolling uh, because, well, basically I'll turn the camera around and you'll see the forager was the other side of that hedge. So it was going fairly fast. There was two trailers on 500 horsepower. He's brand new John Deere and he wasn't holding back with a stick. So I was under quite a lot of pressure on the pit. It was all right when they started a bit further away, but everything around here or is it, well, was there 75 acres around the farm that were all of one field away and the field's only well, 10 acres away. So um, that's about 200 yards, put it that way. So yeah, everything was under pressure a bit. So I haven't got great videos of the forager. Uh, a friend filmed it and it looked like it was filmed on the potato and he also had the shakes like beyond belief for some reason, probably all the monster energy he was drinking. Um, so we'll put them in at the end. Uh, but we are silaging week after next, so we're going out on the 6th. We've got around 200 acres to do in a day on the AD plant. Um, so I should get some videos of that. My brother will be on carting, so we'll be able to get videos of the forager and the merger that runs in front of the forager. And I'll be able to do the pit because I'm on the pit and someone else is on the compactor. So that works quite well um, because I push the silage up, roll the sides, and uh, then get out the way of the compactor. Um, because he's got a five ton roller and the weight of his tractor, whereas I'm just me butt rake, back weight on the back and the weight of my tractor. So I'm a bit lighter than him. Um, so that's next week's plan. In the meantime, this coming week, uh, we're hopefully our friends are coming to spray the fields today. Then we'll be topping, muck spreading, plowing and drilling maize this week. Um, as well as trying to sort out the 33 cattle that came on Friday. So Friday was a really busy day. We were foraging and then also uh, the chap that buys our cattle from us, I asked him to buy some for us. So we had a lorry load at around seven o'clock, sort of an hour or two just before the end of silage was finishing. So guy jumped off uh, the rake and unloaded the lorry. So we've got to process those cattle. All we've got to do is fly worm them. There's a couple of eyes in there that we need to treat. Um, and then we can bring the cows in from outside, um, sort them out into a group, and then the smaller ones can go outside to fresh grass, and the bigger ones can stay inside and go on a diet uh, of grass and maize, and, and they'll grow pretty well on that. So that's this week's job. It's going to be a busy week, uh, but, you know, it's summer, so it's sort of nature of the beast at the minute. It's what we expect. But anyway, I'm going to park the John Deere in the shed because 90% chance of rain tomorrow, and I only cleaned it the other day. So I don't fancy it getting dirty again. This is it. First cut 2022. Little bit later than I'd hoped. First time in this tractor. 
snowing. I've only ever driven it for four. I've driven it four days now. We've had it about a month on the farm. I've driven it four days on the buck rate, and that was about it. Um, just about managed to set the GPS up with a phone call to Hunt. There's a bloody brand new mower as well. I used that for about two hours at the end of last season. Guy had it for two hours before. Um, and that was the demo. We had 21 acres to do. Took them on. Yeah. Probably wasn't four, eight, four hours to mow it. Quite fitty bits, but um, yeah, now we're moseying on. Driving a bit cake. Good so job. I slowed right up just so we can see what I'm doing. So I pressed that button, which is my GPS. So now the steering is taken over. I then press that button, which lowers my mower down. And if I tap it to the right, it should take us up to the cruise control speed, which is 8k up to 12 and a bit. Um, and then all I do is I just tap the stick forward a little bit. Take me up to 13.8, 14k, you can just see it there. That's pretty much it. And then reverse process when I get to the headland. Hold this back, tap that one button there, um, and turn. I am just a steering wheel attendant. Um, once it's all set up, I go around the headland a few times, seven times, and everything else takes care of itself. So I thought I'd better show you what we're growing, or what we're mowing rather, and what we're mowing it with. We've got a new uh, John Deere 6215R and a side mounted 3.2 meter convertible. We've also got a New Orleans fluttering around the place, a 235. Um, guy's currently telling me that. I was in that earlier, as you saw, and uh, that's been our main tractor for four years now. And now the John Deere's come, we replace that. Um, keeping the New Orleans, but the John Deere's more our frontline tractor now. So I'll show you what we're mowing here. So this is what we're mowing. Uh, it's a GS4 legume lay. So we're being paid, it's around 385 pound a hectare to grow this. Um, it's a legume lay, so it means it's a nitrogen fixing crop. Um, this is crimson clover here. Zoom in on it. Uh, we also have some red clover in it, which is what this is. There's four or five legumes in total in this. Um, three different types of grasses. I can't tell you which ones without looking at the bag. Um, but it's being swamped, or has been, with spring barley, which is just coming into its milky stage. It sort of depends where we are. Some on the headland are a lot more milkier than these ones. There you go. That's your cheesy milky stage, so that's like perfect whole crop stage. It could be left a bit longer. Um, but we're not actually trying to grow this. So what we did last year was this was a spring barley whole crop. Um, it was May stubble, and then we left it over winter and we put it into spring barley whole crop. Uh, and then we sort of forgot about it and got really busy, um, and then came out here with the bales of bailers and baled it. So far gone, it was beyond the milky cheesy stage. This is, um, it, it was terribly gone. It was more like we should have left a few weeks ago. Anyway, so there's a so the guy took over about an hour ago, well, 45 minutes ago, on the mower. Quickly showed him how to just like, what, what controls I had going. I came in down, had a bit of lunch, sitting out two o'clock. So I'm going to hitch the tether on which is just there on the New Orleans and uh, take it up and swap back over with Guy and he can go Ted in. So we're on the tether, nice straight lines thanks to the Green Star. Guy's just over there, moment. I'm just setting the tether to how I like it and I'll probably swap over. It's throwing up well. The one thing I really like about this Ventetta, we bought it last year, and it's just the sheer height that you get on the grass when it throws, and it seems to throw it back, well, I'd say two or three metres from the actual rotors itself. Um, we're pushing on quite well, it's picking up all that, getting it nice and clean on the ground. 
okay. So it shouldn't take long to do this to egg fill. Uh, then we'll be on to the end of the next. Today we're silaging, everything we mowed down yesterday, we're picking up today. Um, so I'm on the clamp, butt brake on the front. I had the loader on earlier just to um, just to flick a bit about into the corners, just the first two loads, hold the sheet down. Um, and yeah, I've got the compactor on the back, so she weighs five ton. 1.3 ton butt brake on the front and whatever the tractor weighs probably what, about 8 or 9 ton I imagine and me so plenty of compaction going on we've got 90 odd acres to try and get in here um, the banks aren't very tall as you can see we're only about 6 foot but I'll be able to dome it up in the middle um, and god knows what we're going to do with second kind of maze but We'll worry about that when we get to it. <laughs> 